Natural gas has been the ugly stepchild of our national energy debate, never enjoying the political muscle of oil and coal, and never capturing the imagination, like solar panels and wind farms. And to top it all off, it was in short supply. But that's changing, and now the stepchild is being touted as the hope of the future, the answer to our energy problems. What's brought about the change is there's a new unconventional process for extracting natural gas from shale, a dense rock formation two miles underground. And if you're sitting on top of it, you may become a new American phenomenon, a shaleonaire. And yet, if the BP spill taught us anything, it's that exploring for energy has safety risks. But that can get lost in all the excitement. The story will continue in a moment. What's increasingly evident is that shale gas is overwhelmingly abundant right here in the USA. In the last few years, we've discovered the equivalent of two Saudi Arabias of oil in the form of natural gas in the United States. Not one, but two. See, we have twice as much natural gas in this country, is that what you're saying, than they have oil in Saudi Arabia? I'm trying to very clearly say exactly that. Aubrey McClendon is the CEO of Chesapeake Energy, the largest independent gas producer in the country. He's on a mission to get us off foreign oil and dirty coal. Gas has nearly half the carbon emissions of coal and no mercury. But natural gas is still a fossil fuel. So is it perfect? No, the answer is it's, it's not perfect. But for the next 20 years, natural gas is probably our best bet. And the good news is we've got it, and we've got as much of it as anybody else in the world. Look at a map of shale formations across the country, and you'll see that there's production or exploration in over 30 states. It's an American energy renaissance. 10,000 wells will be drilled here in northwest Louisiana in some of the poorest communities in the country, where impoverished farmers are becoming overnight millionaires as they lease their land for drilling. I never dreamed of money like this. Now you can do whatever you want. I can do what I want. C.B. Leatherwood, a retired oil field worker, got a bundle to drill under his farm. I've got the, a copy of the check here. Oh my, look at that, $434,000. Just like that. And it fell out of the sky. Boy, you done good, C.B. It oh, fell out of the sky for C.B.'s cousin, Mike Smith, too. Oh, look, look at that. He was paid nearly two million. So what'd you do that day? I sat back and thought about it for all day. And I said, I'm a millionaire. And that didn't sound right, but... They actually call them shaleonaires, and they don't mind putting up with the noisy, smelly drilling when the wells are built, because they get a cut of the profits, which could last for years and add up to millions more. So you gentlemen are living in a good, old-fashioned gold rush. It's a gift from the good Lord. Last year, shale drilling generated almost $6 billion here in new household earnings. As the rest of the nation plunged into a recession, this place added over 57,000 local jobs, and the Cadillac dealership in town is hopping. Well, this is your new car. Oh, yes. That uh -huh. is nice. Yes. You love it, don't you? Yeah, I love it. I like the color, too. Champagne. It's a uh, gold mist. This is a million years worth of shale. People have known for a century that shale contained gas, but it was too difficult and pricey to extract. I can't believe there's anything in this rock. <laughs> well, it, it, it is doesn't so look like solid. I mean, can, yeah, it's no, it's pretty pretty really solid. solid. So, but this is shale under a microscope. The dark spaces are where the gas is, and it's everywhere. Oh, here's a great one. For example, That's what's that... going on in the middle of this thing? Yes. The breakthrough in extraction happened when two existing technologies were combined. The first involved accessing the shale by drilling sideways underground. We're currently over two miles down. Two miles down? Two miles down. Okay. Now later today we'll turn the bit from vertical to horizontal along this path and then we'll drill in our target zone for a mile down to the south. The other technology is hydraulic fracturing or fracking 
where millions of gallons of water mixed with sand and chemicals are pumped down the well at enormous pressure. We break the rock, we fracture the rock, and that stimulates the ability of the gas to flow into the wellbore, where we can flow it to the surface and sell it. In light of the BP oil spill in the Gulf, I asked Aubrey McClendon about the safety of fracking. What would happen if you go down to dig for shale and you have an explosion and you destroy a whole part of the country? It cannot happen, okay? It cannot happen. Why do you say that? Well, because we're not a mile underneath the, the surface of the ocean. And if something were to get away, and, and there are incidents where wells um, have loss of control, um, you, can go, you can go fix it. An underground explosion is impossible because there's no oxygen or anything to ignite a blast. But as you can see from these pictures Chesapeake took of their operations, drilling is now a fact of life near homes and farms, and the industry has racked up thousands of accidents and safety violations above ground. This really is your backyard. Oh, look at this. What happened in Tim and Christine Ruggiero's backyard is happening more and more. They moved to this pastoral 10-acre ranch in Decatur, Texas in 2004 to raise their horses and their daughter, Riley. But last year, a company called Aruba Petroleum came and drilled two wells outside their windows, leaving behind this permanent eyesore. You see over here on this tank, can you see where it's, where it's just been still leaking? Why is it doing that? That leaking is just the half of it. They videotaped oozings and gushings. When the state environmental agency shot these hissing toxic air emissions with infrared cameras, the company was hit with a fine. I keep hearing that this process, the horizontal drilling and the fracking, is safe. Well, define safe. Safe for who? Safe in the process or safe for the people that are 200 feet away from it? They put a concrete casing down into the ground in between your water table and the drilling fluids. But cement doesn't ever crack. And you don't ever have well blowouts. In other words, taking shortcuts and human error are endemic to this drilling process. Here, valves weren't tightened. A tank left unattended overflowed. Fluid spilled from a frack container. Aruba said they couldn't comment because the Ruggeros are suing them. Aubrey McClendon's company, Chesapeake, has a much better track record, but that doesn't mean they haven't had problems too. If people are involved, accidents are going to happen. Planes crash, trucks crash, cars crash. It happens. We will have an incident or two. Has Chesapeake ever had an accident? Any kind of an accident? Sure. Probably the most publicized incident was in Louisiana. It happened last year when 17 cows grazing near a drilling site died a gruesome death after drinking fracking fluids that ran off into their pasture. Industry-wide, accidents keep happening like this well explosion due to machine malfunctions or workers cutting corners. Environmentalists like Michael Broon, executive director of the Sierra Club, say the industry is under-regulated. I would say that they've been cavalier. I would say that they've been irresponsible. What should they have done? What should they do right now? The first thing that the industry should do is disclose what chemicals are being used in fracking and then limit the amount of toxic chemicals to a point of zero. The industry doesn't have to disclose what's in the tens of thousands of gallons of chemicals they use when they fracture the shale because of the so-called Halliburton loophole. Halliburton is a leading fracking company and the loophole was created in 2005 under Vice President Dick Cheney, who used to be Halliburton's CEO the 2005 energy bill completely exempted the natural gas industry and fracking technology from any regulation under the Safe Drinking Water Act. It's an outrage. Now Did the vice president put that in there? The vice president advocated for it and he, and he, and he pushed Congress to, to insert it into the language. Part of the fracturing process involves you pouring down some pretty nasty chemicals. What happens if they spill all over the place? Okay, let's define nasty chemicals. Nasty chemicals are underneath your sink. The reality is you don't drink Drano for a reason, but you have Drano in your house. If you want to define them as nasty, go ahead. There are nasty chemicals that affect your liver, that cause cancer, that shut down your system. Yeah, you, do, you don't want to drink frac fluid. If you take away nothing from this interview. No, but isn't there a possibility that you go down and something seeps and it gets into the water supply, it gets into the aquifer? Ah, that's the fear, isn't it? 
Well, yes, okay. it's, of course it's the field. Okay. But freshwater aquifers are only from the surface to about 1,000 feet below the surface of the earth, okay? We are fracking wells at depths of 7, 8, 10, 12,000 feet, okay? So there is almost two miles of rock between where we are active and where fresh water is drawn from. The Environmental Protection Agency is just beginning to study the effects of fracking on drinking water. Is the problem fracking per se or human error? Or consider what happened in this Appalachian town in Pennsylvania. In the shale gas gold rush, Dimmick is the ghost town. How many of you lost your water supply? And there are many more. Yes. yes. Yeah. A company called Cabot Oil and Gas paid many of the folks here $25 an acre, and they were happy until one day a water well exploded. My boy had come over the night before and said, they said, Dad, you're, uh, you, we got gas in the water over there. I can actually shake the jug up and light it. You put a match to your water and it went up in flames? I can take my water, just put it in a gallon jug, shake it up, turn it up, and it'll, it'll explode like. Bill Ely demonstrated it for us by hooking a hose from his well to a jug and lighting it. Wow. Jerry? State authorities have determined that gas leaked into the water because of a poor cement job. Cabot now supplies bottled water to the residents, but has admitted no guilt, so these folks are suing them. You know, this is a poor area. You know, this is a perfect place to come in and drill. A lot of guys didn't have work. Now they're driving trucks, the bars are hopping, the rentals are full, so there is an economic boom here. But at what price? I, I can live without out natural gas. I can't live without my water. No. They have these landowners who will say that their water was clean, they could drink, they couldn't light it on fire. And then the gas industry came in, and now taking a shower makes them sick. There are too many landowners who are describing the exact same scenario, and so it's, it, it All can't, over just, the country. can't just be a coincidence. There's something wrong here. So here we have natural gas from shale, touted as the solution to our energy problems by one group. Another group says it's the biggest environmental nightmare. Ah, well actually they're both correct. So what we need to do is promote gas as a cleaner alternative to coal and oil, but hold the industry accountable for tighter standards. Which Aubrey McClendon says he would go along with because, he says, natural gas is such a huge game changer. If you use natural gas, America can establish independence from OPEC. It can put Americans back to work. We can lower our carbon emissions and we can begin to improve the economy as well by not exporting a billion dollars a day of American wealth. The greatest wealth transfer in human history takes place every day, and it doesn't have to. As part of its study, the EPA asked nine companies to disclose to the government the chemicals used in fracking. Eight complied. Only Halliburton said no. So last Tuesday, the EPA subpoenaed them.